Around the world, the spirit is moving and a voice is being heard. Welcome to the Voice of Evangelism with David Langford. You can write the Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 669, Alexis, North Carolina, 28006. We'll give you that address again at the close of today's broadcast. But here now is David Langford. People, amen. You think sometimes things are going ugly for you. Don't forget who's in control. I love Genesis 42, 36. Me have you bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, Simeon is not, and you will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. How many times have you declared that? Everything in my life is against me right now. I, I go to open the door and, and the doorknob falls off. I go to get the toothpaste and the dog's done got it. I go to do this and it's broke. You say, everything in my life is against me. That's what Jacob said. He said, everything in my life is against me. But the truth was, everything in his life that was taking place was for his good. He just couldn't see it. He thought Joseph was dead. Was he dead? Nope. He's prime minister of Egypt. But from Jacob's perspective, my God, I think the man's dead. Everything's against me. They kept Benjamin, or excuse me, Simeon, when they went to get corn and came back, and Joseph demanded that he keep him. Jacob says, he's probably dead too by now. And now you demand that I surrender my baby son, Simeon. He's got to go back down with you to Egypt. Everything is against me, he said. You see, we can read the beginning and the end. Jacob was living it just like you're living it today. You think everything's against you, but if you could see from God's perspective, everything's just fine. Hallelujah. I said everything's just fine, Sister Joe. Everything's hunky-dory. Whether you realize it, whether you believe it or not, God has everything absolutely under his control, and he's watching over you. When you got up this morning, he recounted the hairs on your head. Amen. He's sovereign. I said he's God Almighty. That means nobody else has room to be more mighty than he is. He's almighty. He's in control. And I, I actually laugh when I watch men who think they're running the show. God says, I raise them up, I pull them down. It's like a turtle sitting on a fence post. Somebody put him there. Hello? Hello? He don't get on top of that fence post and say, whoo, look what I did. No, some farmer picked him up and said, I'm going to give you a ride like you've never had in your life and put him up there. He thinks things are looking good. And after a while he says, can somebody get me down? <laughs> he didn't get there on his own. You've got to believe where you're going. God is taking you there and God will watch over you as he's getting you there. Amen. Notice what he says in verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. I, I, I watch the, the vulgarity. I watch the filth of this world, and I'm like, you people have no conscience. I'd be ashamed to do some of the things that people do, and they call it normal. I sit there and I, I witness these things. I'm saying, you people need to be ashamed of yourselves. Oh, no, they're proud of their sins. As a matter of fact, the homosexual community says even God is gay. No, he's not. God is not a man. He's God. See, we, 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 the, the, uh, we, we, we try to put... Uh, Human identification on God, anthropomorphism. It's giving God human characteristics like the hand of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord upon the righteous. Even when the, 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 the authors of the scriptures are anointed by the Holy Ghost to make penmanship of God, the, the term, as I said, anthropomorphism. But God is God. We, we try to put things on God that you can't put on him. 
That's why I'm one of the most careful men when you hear me say, the Lord spoke to my heart, you better believe it's God. I don't want to put my junk on God. I want to be careful, not say, thus saith the Lord, it's thus saith David Lankford. Hey, Amen. I see so much of that mess. Thus saith the Lord. I know it ain't God. They know it ain't God, but they won't act like they are God. They need to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. When God comes to visit us, if we are not right, we'll either get right and repent and be justified, or we will be lost and cut off from God. You see, I, I know we live in a, a, a generation of people that treat God like a bellboy. You know, you can, you can treat God any way. You can live anywhere. People tell me this all the time. I know I'm not really living like I ought to live, but I still talk to God. Then explain to me Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve two people at the same time. Amen. Yet we want to believe we can live any old way and say we still have a relationship with God. My Bible says God is a jealous God. He wants your allegiance to him. He wants you to walk with him. He's a jealous God. He loves you. He doesn't want you to have any other gods in your life. Amen. When he said to Israel, thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. He didn't mean to take his name and damn something. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about taking his name and saying to the world, I'm a blood-bought, born-again child of God, but on Saturday night I party with the devil's crowd. When a man and a woman get married, for the most part, the wife takes his last name. My wife was a probes. She's a Lankford now. She took my name. She didn't take my name in vain. She's been faithful. But the point is, we say we take God's name, but then we are unfaithful in our relationship. We don't pray. We don't love him. We don't serve him. We prostitute our relationship. We want to be friends with the world. Can I tell you, you cannot be a friend of the world. James 4, verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I'm not making these scriptures up. I know you don't hear preaching like this much, but I'm just preaching the word of God. Period. Amen. But today people are so unaccustomed to hearing the pure word. It's been adulterated. It's like in the old days they would mix water with their wine to make it go further. Kind of like today, used to buy a 50 pound bag of grass seed. Look at the bag now. It's 40 pounds. They took 20% charge you the same amount. I told you I was smart. They trick you. Remember the five-pound bag of sugar? Some of them now, how many? Four. Did the price go down? Nope. They tricking you. This, it's called duplicity. It's deception. It's in everything around us right now, folks. Thank God that's why the truth stands out like a sore thumb in a hammer factory. It's real. Amen? Verse 16, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. You know, people say, you're old-fashioned. What's wrong with old-fashioned? I was taught, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. When you started dating, you opened the door for your girlfriend. Hello? And girls didn't call guys. Guys called the girls. Now the girl's sitting by the phone, praying, 
fast and seeking God to fall in a ring. But she wouldn't call. Her mama told her, you don't chase boys. You don't call boys. They call you. I've been told a many times while I was dating. Time for you to go home, David. It's 12 o'clock. Flash the lights. Some of you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. You're from that new generation. Mamas and daddies used to care about their kids, where they were and who they were with. Amen? What's wrong with that? Nothing. But you shouldn't be like that. They wonder why our kids are so messed up. You leave a child to themselves, the Bible said, they'll bring sorrow to your heart. It's called mischief. They get into things. Then they wonder why they got into the, You know, my kids, I know they thought I was tough. Yeah. But now my kids tell me things like, Daddy, the guys I work with are idiots. Why do you think that, son? Because you taught me different than the way they act. See? Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go when he's old. He will not depart from it. If you don't put it in them while they're young, they'll never get it. Amen? You don't want the world teaching your children. That's why I've always appreciated parents who would sacrifice to put their children in a private school and teach them the, the biblical values of God Almighty. Amen? It's a sacrifice, but it's worth it. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. There's no other way but Jesus. Rick Warren can go to all the, the, the mosque and synagogues he wants to and say that Allah and Jehovah are the same God. That's a lie. They're not the same God because Allah does not exist. It's a lie. Hinduism. Shintoism, all of this stuff is conjured up by the devil in hell. There's only one God, and his son is called Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Period. Amen. He's the God of us all. Yes. But you need to understand. You need to quit trying to understand the ways of the world and understand the ways of God. Is that not what he's talking about here? Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways. What the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the ways of men. And see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Yes. I love the old paths. I love the wholesomeness, the goodness of life. And I liked Andy Griffin and Mayberry, <laughs> Opie, good stuff. See, today it's all salacious, vile, and filthy, and immoral. People sat there and Listen to them take God's name in vain. Had a man call me from California the other week. I blistered him. I just felt in my spirit, you a hypocrite, and I'm going to tell you to your face. We was on the phone. He started crying. He said, you're right. I get mad, and I take God's name in vain. I watch filthy movies. I said, see there? You're not living right. You're trying to deceive your own self. You're, you're the problem. He said he got upset with God. I said, get upset with God? You're the heathen. You're the reprobate. You're the guy backside. You want to get mad at God? Man, if I was God, I'd have fried many of them a long time ago. I would have. That's why I'm not God. I would have been crazy. Amen? Because he was so long-suffering with me when I was stupid. Hello? When I was out there doing stupid stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Drinking, drunk, doped up, smoked up, running down the road 125 mile hour in a car, and God said, what are you doing? The devil's trying to kill you all the time, but God was merciful. God was merciful. You had too much dope in your body. You should have died, but God said, no, they're, they're going to get saved. I'm going to give them mercy tonight. I'm going to show them grace tonight. I'm going to love them. I'm going to love them because if I let them go, the devil will kill them and take them to hell. But I won't let that happen because I love them. We forget the magnitude of God's love in our lives. Amen. It's an awesome love. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest 
for your souls. This is the most restless generation. I, I mean... I, I was a sinner. I know people think if I get this, if I get that, if I get this job, I get this car, I get this house, I get this woman, I get this man, I'll be happy. No, you won't. No, you won't. That's a lie from the devil. Your heart, your soul is so vast, so large. The only thing that can fill it is God. And when God fills your heart, you'll get the right woman, you'll get the right man, you'll get the right job, you'll get the house, you'll get everything you need, amen. God will give it to you. You got to put him first, though. You got to lay it all down, say, you know what? That don't mean nothing anymore. You mean everything. And when you start walking with him, he'll begin to bring things to you. He will bless you because he loves you, amen? But you got to walk in the old path. And the old path is not a compromised path. It's a path where we keep walking in truth, 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 truth. But they said... We will not walk therein. We're not going to do what they say. That's rebellion. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion. One thing I know that will upset a parent is a smart mouth child. Yeah. Just, just smart mouth. When I was growing up, your head was over here and your teeth were over here. Saying, we got to come back together, boys. Why? Because you got popped for that little smart mouth. I know I've been in a lot of homes as a minister for the past 35 years. I've seen children speak to their parents. Had they been my child, I'd use a little tack and tacked them to the wall. I sure would have. But, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah, when you're sitting in a place, there's a plate glass about that thick between you and them and you're on the phone talking, you wish you'd have done something besides wait until it got to that point. Amen? Amen? But when I was brought up, and my children will still tell you, they remember the tingle of the belt, the belt buckle, that little tingling sound. Uh-oh. Uh oh, it's on now. You walk in the room, why all these saints just come in order. It, it, the whole house gets in order just that quick. What's the problem in here? Nothing, Daddy. Nothing at all. Well, let's see here. Come here to me. And you start frailing. Please quit. <laughs> I will when you straighten up. Amen. You say, well, that's cruel. I didn't turn out too bad. Most of you sitting here didn't either. Because you got a belt when you needed it. Amen? Does you good to get a belt once in a while. Oh, by the way, whom the Lord loves, he, oh, he'll whip you too. People don't even know the scripture. They don't know that God disciplines his people. Why does he do it? Because he loves us. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens and he scourgeth. Now, a scourging is a, a, a beating. You ever had a beating? I've had a whooping and I've had a beating. I'd rather have a whooping than a beating. But the beating will get the mess out of you. They beat it out of you, that's what I'm trying to say. Then you get better. Amen? I believe God's beat me a time or two. But I needed it. I did. My hard head. I know some of you don't have a head near as hard as my head is, but I've had to be beat a time or two. But it didn't hurt me, amen? In closing, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Joel 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. See, I'm trying to blow the trumpet. I'm trying to sound the alarm and tell you, Something's coming. Get ready. We all make preparation if we're getting ready to go on vacation or to go of any place of an extended stay. You, you got to get somebody to maybe take care of something at the house while you're going or whatever. You have to get ready. The Holy Ghost is telling us you need to get ready. Get ready. 
God is about to do some great things, and from the world's perspective, some of it will be good, some will be bad. Amen. God is getting ready to do some things. Mark my words. God is getting ready. He said, I have set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hear, hearken. In other words, people say, I'm not going to listen to you. I've been upset with my kids and get right in their face and say, listen to me. Listen to me. See, they hear everything you say, but they're not listening. There's a difference in hearing and listening. We're all guilty of standing with someone and they're saying something to us and our mind is somewhere else. We heard them, but we weren't listening. God says, listen to me. Listen to me. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among you? Hear, O earth. This is God's creation, the whole earth. He's talking to everyone, everything. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. People today just won't listen to God, but they reject what God says. God makes it plain. Adultery is sin. Fornication is sin. Drunkenness is sin. Thievery is a sin. Idolatry is a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. We don't like to talk about sin. A lot of preachers don't like to talk about sin. But when sin takes root in a person's life, it knows no boundaries. The word cancer simply means any evil condition that spreads destructively. We have the medical term malignancy, which means tends to produce death. Sin is a malignant cancer. It doesn't stop. It will keep encroaching your life until it utterly destroys your life. Thank God, one drop of the blood of Jesus Christ will stop sin in its tracks. It can no longer encroach. It can no longer gain any ground in your life. When the blood is applied, sin is immediately stopped by the blood of Jesus. It stops. Sets a man free. A man can go down on his knees, the most vile, wicked human being, but get up because of the blood of Jesus Christ and be called a saint of God. That's the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you listening this morning? Are you listening to the word of the Lord? This is not just the word of anyone. This is the word of a king. King Jesus is speaking to us, trying to get us ready, trying to get us prepared because our world is going to change. It's changing. We're in some type of a cycle, as I said a while back. September the 11th, 2001. We went from a time of peace to a time of chaos, just like that. That quick, everything changed. Your banking changed. Now you had to fill out more paperwork and uh, do this and do this and do that to open a checking account. Why? Terrorism. Then in 2008, September 2008, financial debacle, chaos. If we don't bail out the banks and stuff, this whole thing will collapse. That's what they tell us. I believe we're in some kind of a seven-year cycle. I'm looking for September 2015, another catastrophic event. Why? Because God is not a man that he should lie. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? I don't care what God says, it'll come to pass. It will come to pass. He told Jeremiah, I'm going to visit you. You have forsaken me. You have forgotten who I am. And I will allow the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, to come in here and plunder your nation and plunder your city, Jerusalem, because the people will not hearken to me. God is trying to get everybody's attention right now, but we will not hearken. We reject the word of the Lord. I don't want to hear that. You know, I want to tell you something, and I'm going to be very candid. I am sick and tired of these mealy mouth preachers preaching nothing but love and peace and prosperity. 
Give that to a child all the days of his life and he'll be ruined when he becomes an adult. Amen. There needs to be some discipline. There needs to be some reproof. There needs to be some rebuke. There needs to be some teaching, fundamentals. Amen. That's why people don't respect each other anymore. I, I saw the video this week. Maybe some of you saw it. Two black guys. I have no idea what was going on, but the one went back to his car, got his gun, walked around. Bam, 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 bam. Like, life doesn't mean anything. I'm like, what, what's, what's that all about? What, what could you say and make a man get that angry that quick and just shoot somebody? What about the retired police officer in the movie theater? Because somebody's texting? Thank God I don't text. <laughs> Bam! See, the Bible says in Revelation 6, verse 4, there's going to be a rider on a red horse that goes across the earth. You know what he does? He takes peace from the earth. He takes peace from the earth. That's what you call taking peace when people just shoot each other. I mean, is this the wild, wild west or what? You see, we've become desensitized. We sit on the news, we sit on the news, we sit on the news, we read about it, we read about it. And after a while, it don't mean anything to us. But if it happens to you, it means everything. It happens to your son or your daughter, it means everything. And let me tell you, the thief comes but for one reason, Jesus said, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And don't you think he doesn't want to do that to every one of us if he can? Are you listening to me this morning? Are you taking heed? Hebrews 2, 1, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we let them slip. And that mean, in the Greek means to be like a leaking vessel. You put something in it and it leaks out and you lose it. Don't you lose the word of God. Don't you lose this book. You hide this book in your heart that you might not sin against him. Amen. We serve a mighty God. I will remind you of the scripture I gave you this morning. Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Anything. And there's not. Nothing is impossible with God. He can take five barley loaves and two small fishes and feed 5,000 men plus the women and children. It's a pretty big task, about 15,000 people, but God can do anything. Amen. I praise him this morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Try to spend some time this week in the word and in prayer. It'll help us all. Amen. It'll change the tenor of our worship services. If we'll seek God, when you come and you bring him with you, he will be exalted in this place and he will rain righteousness upon his people. Amen. The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford is brought to you by the faithful listeners and supporters throughout America. If you're looking for an uncompromising message, we invite you to tune in each week to The Voice of Evangelism. For more information, write to The Voice of Evangelism, P.O. Box 669, Alexis, North Carolina, 28006. That's P.O. Box 669, Alexis, North Carolina, 28006.